looking at where we are as a church, and this is just Pastor Campbell, I think we're slipping in our fervor for God. Not that we don't love him, not that we're living right, it's just that it's kind of going through the motion. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a f- attractive. It's not like, man, wh- wh- what, wh- what's going on in your life? Like, I, I want what you got. It's not, I don't feel that magnetic pull for people to want to be here because we're so on fire for what God is doing. And I think today kind of unlocks one of the keys of what's happening in our life. I'm not down, I'm not mad, not fussing. This is just an observation of me being transparent with my church that there have been times that we were so on fire. As a matter of fact, to wake our church up for the first time, I taught an eight-week series called Church on Fire and had to teach our church what a church on fire looks and feels like. So as you listen to the word of God on today, I want you to judge your passion for God and the things of God. Let's pray. God, you're awesome and amazing. What a joy it is to be able to come before you. And uh, again, Holy Spirit, there's nothing I can do without you. So I step all the way back. Uh, They'll hear me, but I need them to really receive and hear you. They'll see me, but most importantly, they need to really experience you. I just thank you right now that you've given everybody the mindset to come and attend on today. But God, we just don't want to be attenders. We want to be doers. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, there are people that you sent here today that, that need to start or reunite an authentic relationship with you. Given the opportunity, nothing will stop them from choosing you as Lord and Savior. There's also, Father, a group of people that you sent here today that need a place to call home. They're watching online. They need a church. They were invited by a friend, a family member, found us online. But they need a place that they can be planted and grow. Nothing will stop them from joining the Faith Center on today. But most of all, this is a gathering of victorious believers. And Satan, you're absolutely defeated in every area of our lives. So God, we give you alone all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. It belongs to you and all of God's people. Say amen. amen. Let's make our faith confession for the word of God. You should see it on your screen. Let's do it, family. The applied word of God will change my life instantly. And a doer of the word, I live to please God. I walk by faith. I will possess my promises. I will pursue in passion. I will prosper as my soul prospers. My faith is my evidence. In Jesus' name, would you say amen? Amen. Before you take your seats, would you prove this is not a stuck-up church? There are people all around you that need a good morning. And then would you also make some noise for the people that are in overflow? They were not able to make it in here this morning. Can we? Yeah. Hey, y'all. But come on, y'all spread some love. Prove we're not stuck up around here. Hey, what's up? I'm glad that you all are connected. I need you all to share it and like the chat up as I teach this word of God on today. Check in and let us know where you're watching from. Amen. Amen. Starting a series today called Why, and that's what it's called. That's just the name of the series. It's why the series. Say why. Why. I don't know if you've been like me at some point in life. You've asked God several questions, and one of those questions was why. Why? Why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to deal with them? Why is this happening to me? Is anybody honest enough that you've ever asked the Lord the question, why? Okay, all right, all right. I'm going to show you today that your why and his why are battling, and we need to embrace God's why. Y'all with me? Okay, here we go. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, that's going to be our launching pad. You come on, man, if you got to fix it. You good, you good. He was looking at me like, I need to come up there, Pastor, something wrong. You good, man. And since you're doing that, I'm going to tell them to turn that clock off on the screen because they got the clock right there, and that's, that's messing with my, my thing in my head. Okay, all right. 2 Corinthians, I mean, um, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Watch this. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the Apostle Paul writing this, talking to the church of Corinth about an experience that he had that I'll highlight more as we move in the sermon. But I want to read this from the Amplified Version. Listen to this. But he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough, always available, regardless of the situation. I want you to hang on to that. Regardless of the situation, for my power, God's power, is being perfected, per perfected and, his, and is complete and shows itself most effectively in your weaknesses. Therefore, I am all the more gladly boast in my weakness so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and dwell where class? In me. The, the power of Christ just don't get on you. The power of Christ dwells in you. Let's look at three simple things that we need to see as we investigate this question of why. Number one, uh, God's grace is enough for all situations. No matter what situation you're in, because he says, my grace is sufficient. So God's grace is, is, is enough for, say, all situations. Number two, his strength, this is good, needs our weak situations to show itself. So some of you are asking the question why, and I'm answering it right now. You, why do I have to deal with this? And why did I have to go through divorce? And why did they have to fire me? And why did this have to happen to me? And why? why? But because some of this situation, watch this, God didn't cause it, but he's allowing it and he's using it. Okay, okay, okay. God did not cause it, but he's allowing it and he's using it so you can understand his power, say his power. Uh, number three, number three, the grace of God's, uh, the grace of God leads us to the power of God. You will never get to the power of God until you embrace the grace of God, and the grace of God is what causes you to go through all situations. Okay. Three simple things that we need to do. Number one, this is good. Don't stop listening because the moment may be challenging. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you mean by that? At the beginning it says, and he said unto me, and he said unto me. One of the challenges that happen when people go through hard times, they stop listening to God. That's good. And they start listening to other people, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Number two, number two, uh, know what he said, believe what he said, and do what he said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then number three, this is a simple thing that we need to do. Let's read this one together. Let's go, class. Don't allow other voices... One more time, one more time. There are voices that are competing for your allegiance and your attention. And when you start going through situations, these voices start talking and their voices become even louder. And depending on your discipline, you could allow one of these voices to shape you. Check this out. Number one, number one, we have the voice of society. Society has a voice. Yes, sir. Society's voice is so loud, it's trying to tell churches, Christians, pastors, how to lead churches, even though they're not considering the Bible. They're saying you need to do this based on how society says it, or we'll raise up against you. Society's voice is always trying to tell men what to do, always trying to tell women what to do. Society's even trying to tell what a married couple should look like. Y'all should have this and y'all should have that. And what about, first of all, we love each other, we faithful, and we got God. Is that good enough? Yeah, yeah, that's good. So y'all sleep on me. I, no, no, no. You, you will have society always putting pressure on people and on you when you go through situations when you're asking why. Then you have the voice. Come on, y'all. The voice of success. Once you get a certain amount of success, that thing will start talking to you. Grandmama said you got the big head. You know, when you was on JV, you ain't have no cockiness. Now you're on varsity, you're up for all county, now you walk around with your little chest out. That's the voice of success. That's all it is. 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 You no, know, when you ain't have no man, you was quiet and humble. Now you done got your little man. Now you're loud and arrogant. You just what you need to do is, now that's just the voice of success. 
When you was making $30,000, you were so faithful. You, now the voice of success, it's time to honor God out of 100000 The voice of success tell you, that's just too much money to be given in any church. They don't, they don't need that. That's just... That's just the voice of success, when you was in your apartment, you were faithfully coming to church. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. And now, and now, and now, you got your little house. The voice of success will tell you, you know Sunday is the only day you can really clean your house. You need to stay home. And that's, the, that's the only day you got. You need to stay home and, and clean up. That's, that's what, that's, that's what. Hey, here we hear the, the voice of? Come on, y'all. Talk about y'all family. The voice of? You don't use more than you've ever had. You used to have this. Now you got all of this. You don't even use this. You just really use this. But you're so selfish, you won't even help nobody with this. Ladies, pull close. Hold your chin up and turn it to the right. You could clothe a village if you stop telling yourself, I'm going to wear that again. Girl, that thing ain't even in style no more. By the time you wear it, it's going to be in style for your grandkids. Let that thing go. No, it, no, no. It's, 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 you're, you're selfish. If you hadn't worn it in two seasons, you don't need it. Look at somebody. Look at somebody. Say, look back, look, look, look back straight. Don't look at me. Look back straight. Don't look at me. You can, get, you can be saved and on your way to heaven and selfish. You had your little apartment. Anybody could come over. You cook for people. You help people. Now you got your house. People got an RSVP to come to your house. You know why? Okay, okay. The voice of? Everybody under 21, please hang with your boy right here. Please hang with your boy right here. Please hang with your pastor right here. The voice of social media will talk to you and tell you so much. And here's the truth. Only about 3% of social media is true. And the problem with social media, y'all listen to popular people that are not proven. And so when you keep hearing this popular voice tell you this is what you need to do and this is what you need to do and this is what you need to do and this is what you you be like, you know what you're right because they do have 5 million followers. That don't mean them people fought, ain't going in the ditch with them. Don't let social media's voice define who you are. No, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Come here, young lady. Everybody ain't got the same shape. Everybody ain't got the same texture of hair. Everybody don't have the same skin. That don't mean just because you don't have that that you're less than. No, you bad if you say you bad. You bad if you get your mind right. And then don't, 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 don't let society and social media tell you what your shape should be like. Some people like cans. Some people like bottles. I missed that one. I missed that one. I missed that one. Everybody don't drink out no cans. Some people like liters. Don't you? Don't you? Don't you let society and social media tell you? And you around there starving yourself. You better tell just eat, sis. Eat. You better eat. No, I'm trying to tell you, somebody will love you right where you are. That boy preaching up in here today. You around here can't breathe, tucking and taping and carrying on and walking up. Man, just let the... <sighs> the voice of Satan. <laughs> you know Satan is always battling for your mind. Then check this out. The voice of Check this out. When God gives an order for you to go, sometimes it's so big and you like, why? Why go after that? Why me? But if you don't have the right people in your ear speaking faith, you will have scared people in the boat just like Peter. Peter said, I want to get out on this water. I want to walk. And they're saying, no, stay back here and die with us. You got to be careful that when it's time to walk, you're not letting scared people keep you from doing something great. 
I got to move. I remember when I was growing up, um, you couldn't ask the question, why? You couldn't ask, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, not, not a lot of y'all, because I know this is the youngest service, but you couldn't ask why. If you did, you wake up dead. You wake up, people be standing over you like, he looked just like himself. Who had the body? Who? You couldn't ask why. You couldn't ask why. And if your parents had a nice day and they let you get away with asking why, I've only gotten one answer my entire life. Anybody know what the answer was? But y'all had the same mama They was kin to my mama Because I said so Why Watch this Why represents two focuses Number one It's a position of being inquisitive I got a question I'm not trying to be disrespectful I'm just asking questions But also secondly Why represents a question of immaturity most kids deal with this. They're so immature that they question everything that you tell them to do for their benefit. Go take a bath. Why? Because you stink. I mean, it's, it's late. You must stink. Like, you don't smell. You ain't see them flies. But because of their immaturity, they act, why? It's time to go to bed. Why? I don't want to go. To, I don't want to go to bed. Go lay down. You finna bust your head. Go. Immaturity, watch this, come close, always makes you ask the question of why to, to, to spiritual and regulated authority when you don't want to submit. Most of our whys come from a place of spiritual immaturity, not recognizing the real why. We're asking God, why do I have to go through this? And why do I have to forgive? And why do I have to serve? And why can I fornicate? And why do I have to do this? Why do I have to? And he says, because the plan or purpose Christ is working in you. Ultimately for the Father to get the glory. 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 God is trying to get the glory out of your lives. And you're trying to pray away the process. So some of you are asking God, God, do this, do this, do this. And he has not done it yet. Come close. He's not going to. Because some of the prayers that you're praying are not meant for him to remove things. It's meant for you to stay in them, develop, and understand that he's trying to get the glory out of your life. When we feel a certain way, we ask why when we don't want to follow his plan. We ask why when we don't feel like we're in control. We ask why when we feel like the cost that he's asking us requiring is too much. We ask why when we have more feelings than faith. We ask the question why when we simply don't want to do it. Has God ever told you to do something and you were just like, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. God asked me to forgive. I'm like, forgive who? I forgive a whole village before I can forget that joker right there. <laughs> Has God ever told you to do something? You didn't do it. And it costs you more in the long run. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We ask why when we feel like we don't qualify. We ask why when the pain associated with the purpose grows stronger. Check this out. This is God's plan and desire. But our why becomes cloudy to his why. Hang with me, it's going to make sense. Herein, in John 15, 8, is the Father glorified. How's the Father glorified? That you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Let's look at this again. Herein is my Father glorified that you do what y'all? Bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Most of the time when we read this scripture, we focus on the fruit, but we overlook the faithfulness. Because you don't become a disciple without being faithful. And you don't get fruit without being faithful. But we want the fruitfulness of God without the faithfulness of God. Okay, okay. Second Corinthians, the scripture that I read, is a letter that the Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. And they had some challenges within the church that are much like our Western society today. They were um, focused and really into their earthly possessions 
And Paul starts this discourse out not boasting and bragging on things. He started talking about, I have a challenge, an issue, a thorn in my flesh to get them to see that our mission is not about the accumulation of things we have. It's about the mission of Jesus Christ. It's not saying that you shouldn't have nice things and want nice things and, and progress in life. But I've seen society influence Christianity that we've turned God into a cash register versus the king. My God. I thought Jesus came to save us from our sins, but we're more so focused on being around Jesus, getting the stuff of Jesus, but never letting Jesus get in our heart. That's good, sir. And so... You get to this place where there's this faithfulness test. Say faithfulness test. Faithfulness test. This is a, a group of scripture I'm going to read here in Matthew 28 that you probably heard before, but if not, hang on and I'm going to explain it. But I never saw faithfulness in this. The, the, then the 11 disciples, this is after Judas betrays Jesus. This is after Judas hangs himself because he says it's 11 disciples versus 12. Jesus has already come, been resurrected. He's back after uh, the 11 disciples went away to Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubt it because, I mean, think about it. He was dead. Now he back. I'm doubting that that's Jesus, that that's Jesus as well. Okay, check this out. Here we go. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and do what, y'all? Teach all nations. Doing what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Then what? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is what's called the Great Commission. Say the Great Commission where he commissions the disciples to go out and make disciples. A disciple is not a person that just comes to church. Coming to church today did not make you a disciple. Coming, me, me preaching this sermon does not make me a disciple. That just means I'm a guy preaching a sermon. But a disciple is someone that puts their life down, they come and they follow Christ, they're learned of him, and they go and they duplicate the process. But the Great Commission, because of our culture, has become the Great Compromise. You know why it's a compromise? Because it's why? Go make disciples. Well, why today? Because, you know, this, this day I, I get my hair braided and then I, and then I, got, I got stuff I got to do. Go make disciples. This, this is my off day. This... It's the only day I get to sleep in. Go, 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 go witness to that person. I don't know her. I ain't going to go over there talking to no strange lady. Talk to that person. Now, Lord, you see them people gay. Now, you know I ain't going over there talking. Come on now, Lord. They gay. You see, you see they gay. Send me to a blood-bought Christian to talk to them about the goodness of Jesus. Go, go, go talk to that person. But they're not black like me. He said, no, I want you to go, I want you to disciple all nations, teaching all people. But no, uh, uh, they, they, I mean, uh-uh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not doing that. They, they, they're, not my, they're not my race. I'm not talking to them. They don't believe what I believe. I'm not, I'm not talking to them people. I'm not going over there. You see how quiet it is? Because most of the times, his why gets watered down with our why's. Why, why, why do I have to go through this? Why do I have to do that? Why, why, hey, why not you? Because although you're representing spiritual immaturity, come close, you're representing spiritual arrogance. Because you feel that you're in a position to pray for other people when they go through, but you're too much of a person to go through anything. Wow. Wow. I, I, pray, I pray you through, girl. I pray for you when, you when your marriage falling apart. I pray for you when your children acting crazy. I pray for you when they fight. I pray when you when you got COVID and the COVID. I pray for you. But when you get it, why me, Lord? When you go through, why I gotta go through? I've been so faithful to you. Come close to me, please. Who are you that you can't go through nothing? Who told you you're so superior that God can't get, send you through a challenge to prove your faith, to prove your test, to prove your, your discipline and your growth? And who told you that every mountain that's in your life you can pray and praise it away? 
No, some mountains, you're going to have to get your cuticles messed up, girl. You're going to have to climb this one, bro. You're going to have to scale this mountain. And the truth of the matter is, some mountains, I'll show you later, you will always climb your entire life. I didn't say sin struggles. I, no, I said some things you will have to fa- fight and scale your entire life. Here's why. God wants us to reach people. We want to reach places. Wow. Wow. And one of the things that messes with me about church, I don't understand how we got the greatest thing that we say in our lives. This is the best thing cooking in town, but we never bring anybody. We never tell anybody. And we never express it to anybody. We just want to come, get fed, get fat, and get more. We never want to go and witness to anybody and say, come over here where my life has changed. I just don't understand how we have the solution. You know, you know who gets my attention, Isaiah? Uh, uh, Mormons, they get my attention. Hebrew Israelites, oh, them brothers on my radar, they get my attention. They wrong as four left shoes, but they get my attention. Muslim brothers, oh, they get my attention. Because they're so devoted. Them Mormon brothers be on them bicycles with them little helmets. And they have on shirt, tie, it's like they got the same tie, same helmet, same bike, same. It's like they get them from Mormons or us or something. I don't know where they get it. No matter what state, it's the same, it's same everything. And it looked like the same guy. I don't know. <laughs> hey, while we laughing, they know how to engage young people. I ain't never seen no gray-haired man on the bike going to tell nobody. It's always young guys. I, they get my attention. I don't respect what they believe just like they don't respect what I believe, but they get my attention. These Hebrew Israelites, these young, these soldiers getting together, man, they so misguided and they, they think that the Bible is a tool to beat people and, and be angry and, and, and make it about a race thing. And it is not at all. Race is included. God's grace is included. Wrath and war is included. But this is not about dominating and raising one race over another. Because if you want to use the Bible to bring black people over white people, that's what they did with slavery. That's not what the Bible is for. I know I just lost my five brothers. Come back. You ain't got nowhere to go. You can't get up because we know it's you. Just hang with me. But the thing I love about them, they're diligent. And they will get together. And they're studying. And they don't mind defending what they stand for. And them doggone Muslim brothers, they're going to take every corner they can. And they're going to sell everything you get, they got. And they're going to take that money. And they're going to put it back into the ministry. And they're going to grow that thing. And they're empowering me. And they're making them entrepreneurs. They're serving the cause. But our church... If we can't get out front and we can't get a position, we don't want it. And I'm trying to figure out, when did the Great Commission become the Great Compromise? I'll do it later, God. When did the Great Commission, for those of you that are washing dishes right now, that the Bible time is not not as important as it used to be, and it's just something that I'll do, and I'll I'll wash dishes, and I'll do this, and okay, amen, and I'll hit the heart, and... Man, we're watering down the grave. And, 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 and check this out. How many of y'all somebody prayed for you? Come on. Grandma prayed for you. Okay, good. Amen. You know what's happened? That was a river. Grandma got it. Grandma passed it. Grandma got it. Grandma passed it. Mama got it. Mama passed it. We got it. And now we just sitting. We're a reservoir. Jesus. Wow. God is saying there's people all around you. And you're like, got nothing to do with me. I'm not concerned about that. Sing my song. Do my, let me get my dance on. Let, 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 me, let me get my praise. And most of us, check this out. In our culture, we want to go to churches where we're electrified more than we're empowered. We crank that organ up and get them drums going. Y'all run all around the church. Don't give God a dollar and don't change. And that's all we want to do. But we never want to witness. We never want to do life with other people. We never want to get connected. We just want to come and just, and just have a good time. And, that, and that's good church. That's not good church. Yes, sir. When people you know all around you don't have the hope that you have, don't have the faith that you have, don't have the love of Jesus that you have. Paul had this extraordinary experience. He was able to see something so grand 
that he couldn't fully express it. The, the, the grandeur of the vision caused him to be in a position where he had this malady where he was given this thorn. And he went to, to God and, and he sought him three times to remove it. Watch what happens though. It was the pain of the moment that allowed him to grow in the power of Christ. Watch this. He goes to God to ask him to remove the thorn. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in what, y'all? Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's good. That's good. God's answer to his request was a clear and permanent no. God's answer. This is Paul. Paul wrote more of the New Testament than anybody. This is Paul that used to be a Christian killer, now he's an apostle. This is Paul, the, the one that's grooming up the, 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 young, the young Timothy. This is Paul. And you won't answer him? You won't bless him? What is it that you've been asking God to do that he's given you a permanent no that you're pouting about? My guy wanted two things. I wanted the NFL and a family. God gave me a family so he could save my life. Okay. My guy, I wanted two things. That's good. That's I wanted good. the NFL and I wanted a family. God gave me a family so he could save my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. My guy, I wanted two things. I wanted the NFL and I wanted a family. God gave me a family so he could save my life. I'm in decent shape. But if somebody hit me right now on the football field, I'd crack, I'd fall up like the 10 man. I, I, I got one play. I got one play in me and I don't want no contact. <laughs> don't grab me though, but I don't want no contact. Do you know why I didn't get what I was praying for? That's good, sir. Because my immaturity made me think I was mature enough to handle it. No, I wouldn't have been no pastor. I'd have been somewhere doing something dumb. I'd have been dumb. <laughs> you talking about the ego? Oh my God! You, 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 you. <sighs> you would have had to hire a blimp to come get my ego. No, some of this stuff that you've gotten a permanent no that you depressed about. Why don't he want me? God is saying, "Girl, listen. That is the finest devil you've ever seen." You do not know. Me and Lady C was watching a TV show the other night, and we seen this couple out the gate. She said, something ain't right about him. <laughs> By the end of that movie, God, dog it, boy, that boy, that boy, that boy, that boy, hey, that boy, that was terrible. <laughs> Some things you want. Did you, what, what did I get? And then, and then, okay, I'm going to get ahead of myself. And then, check this out. Because the truth, truth is, come here, you think you better than others. You ain't never looked at nobody and be like, and she got a man? <laughs> and I don't? This SpongeBob looking Thundercat got a man. <laughs> and I don't? She look young and restless. And I ain't got no? No, no, no. That's a superiority complex, y'all. No, we deal with it from time to time. We deal with it from time to time. And then don't be in no church and be no real, like no, like no church person. Somebody else get blessed and they testify. God made a way. And you sitting over there like, he ain't made no way for me yet. No, man. Man, it was people in our church getting pregnant. They didn't take care of the kids they had. And me and Lady C wanted a kid bad. We, I mean, we, man, we wanted me a bad. And, they were, and man, God had to deal with my heart. Come on, who, who are you to say them people can't take care of their kids? And I'm telling God, God, I got, the, I got the space for it. I got the money for it. I got this for it. I got that. He was like, boy, hush. You do not, you do not even know. Shut your mouth. And I had to deal with my heart because I was measuring myself up. I tell on me, y'all ain't, ain't never did this. But I tell them, I was measuring myself up against people, what God did for them. Like if he did it for them, God, dog, he should at least done it for me by tw two times at least. Y'all ain't never thought that way before? Well, forgive me. Let's investigate weakness. Let's investigate weakness. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. 
So Paul says, strength is made perfect. Y'all hang with me in overflow. Strength is made perfect in weakness. He wouldn't know the grace of God without the thorn. And without the thorn he, and, and the grace, he wouldn't have been able to endure that the power of Christ may rest upon him. But he says, I have to embrace weakness. Most of us never get to a place of grace is because of our wrong thinking about weakness. I, w- I will admit to you that I'm struggling in certain phases of my age and life. Number one, I'm okay with the fact that if I'm going to do any physical activity, I must warm up first. And I got to warm up. I'm just not going, hey, let's shoot the ball. No, you go ahead and start. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> I'm doing some one, two way backs. I, I got I to I get this stuff moving. Like I got, I got yeah, I got to jump start. I got to make sure that I all get through everything. And I don't want to blow no gasket. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that I have to warm up. But I'm, but I'm struggling because I've been one way so long that now my doctor's telling me stuff like, okay, so now you have to take a fiber sub. I'm like, what? Like, bro, this me. <laughs> like this, come on, baby. This me. And I'm struggling with now I got to do stuff a little bit different. And then when I, you can just eat, 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 then your wife like, hey, hey, how many of those today have you had? Like, you snitch, man. Snitches get stitches, man. Damn. All the way around here trying to be a food police. I'm on my nerves, man. So I'm struggling with that. And y'all laughing? Keep going to bed. Keep waking up. You gonna be right here. Because we used to laugh not too long ago. When I found out yesterday, I was listening to a station that said classic hip hop. I'm like, my songs that I group on is classic. I'm a classic. This was yesterday. Classic. I seen this meme that said, yeah, 30 years ago, and the lady was like, you mean the 70s? She's like, no, 1990s. That was 30 years ago. I had to carry the one. I was like, that ain't right. <laughs> so here's why I was struggling. Because in my mind, weakness meant helplessness. Mm-hmm. And just because I have some weak areas doesn't mean I'm helpless. Yes, sir. All that means is my weakness is I have a greater dependence on something stronger and greater than myself. But the reason some of us won't become weak is because of this. Our why, oh, this is good right here. See, see, when you can can ace this one right here, our why is greater than his why. And when your why is greater than his why, you'll always struggle. Jesus, he's, on, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. Been there, seen it, seen 4,000-year-old trees. I'm, I'm there, I'm, I'm in the garden. I'm like, Jesus was here. Like, Jesus was, this is where he wanted to, to give up. This is where he prayed with the disciples. This is where they fell asleep. This is where he wanted to let the, the crucifixion, the cup pass from him. This is where he didn't want to do it, but he got to the place that says, not my will, your will be done. Let, let's, let, let's insert, not change the scripture, but not my why. Your why be done. Weakness expresses a dependency on something or someone greater than yourself. I could talk about the power. I could talk about the grace, which I will. But here's how this all goes together. If you didn't enjoy this week, I'll try to do better next week. Listen to me. Some of our whys have to do with our lives. But the ultimate why is God saying, I need people that have been redeemed, that I've changed their lives to understand that this is a battleship and not a cruise ship. 
We're not here to eat salsa and go to the Lido deck and lay out. Wouldn't be that bad. We're here to learn and to defeat an enemy that's trying to take people out of this world. There's a new death out. I didn't know if you knew about it. It's really called the walking dead. There are people that are walking around us that are already deceased, but their heart is still pumping because they have no hope. When you have no hope, you don't care whether you live or die. When you have no hope, you don't care what happens tomorrow. When you have no hope, any option seems like a good alternative to you. And I'm trying to figure out why we as Christians, scratch that, why we as the faith center are so focused on ourselves that we lost attention to other people around us that need Jesus. I'm trying to figure out how we're, we're, we're doing D groups and it's about believers getting together with believers, reading through the word, answering a few questions, holding each other accountable. And it's like you almost got to bribe people to do that. Amen. I thought this is what we signed up for. So, Pastor, you trying to get, preach a message to get us to lead groups? Yes and no. Yes, you should do that. But no, I'm trying to get you to see that if you don't watch it, these voices will get you off track. No, man, when my company blew up, y'all stand so I can stop talking, y'all stand up. When my company blew up, I used to plan work on Sundays that I didn't want to hear certain people speak. I ain't going this Sunday, I'm gonna go get some money. And God was like, but wait a minute, when you was broke, you was so hungry to be there, so Come on, man, get back to the why. What, what are you doing here? Your why now is greater than, yeah, because I'm trying to hustle, and I'm going to build this other house, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to buy this, and I'm going to get this other business, then I'm going to flip that. He didn't say you couldn't do that, but your why can't be bigger than his. And I'm watching a world. I'm watching a church that God is blessing. Man, God is doing amazing things in this church. God is doing amazing things to the people of this church. I'm telling you, he is doing some outstanding things. This is your pastor. This is my heart. But we just doing barely enough for him. In some things, y'all, he's not moving. He wants you to walk through this process. Hey, come here, sis. Bruh, he not changing your job or your department. I've been praying for a transfer. I've been praying for a transfer, and I'm trying to get away from this devil, and I'm telling you they're going to make me go ham up in here, and I'm trying to keep my little religion together, not to hand out these reach one cards in church, and I don't want these people to know that. No, 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 he's saying no. I'm not moving you. I want you to turn your light up. Amen. Your light is supposed to be shining. And society's voice, ooh, some of you, the reason the power of God ain't showed up is because you block in powerful situations. Society teaches you instead of deal with people that don't like you and pray for people that don't like you, block them and remove them. Just get rid of them. No, 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 no. You're supposed to stand in the face of the lie, keep your mouth closed and watch God fight for you. So somebody else can see that and say, you know what? You got something that I need. And then here's the truth, Tamika. Most of us, our egos are too big to talk about our thorns. Somebody need to know your marriage was raggedy. You didn't listen to God. You didn't listen to your mama. You married the wrong person, but God made a way for you. But you standing, you doing better. How to get your peace back. How to not be depressed. But no, you don't want nobody to know that about you. You don't want nobody to know you. you. No, I just, I'm blessed. I've been blessed all my life. God has been with me all my life. I've just been blessed. And I came out of the womb blessed. I went to school blessed. And I, even when I was taught in, in middle school, I was blessed. And when I learned how to do the blocks, I was blessed. I've just been blessed, 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 blessed. Oh, just blessed, 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 blessed. Oh, God. Everything about me blessed, blessed, blessed. In the bassinet, blessed, blessed, blessed. Baby shower, not even come out yet, blessed, 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 blessed. 
Doctor saw me first word, I didn't even cry, I said, bless. No, somebody needs to know, hey, 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 me, I'm here, and guess what? I had to cry all week to get here. But I didn't get high like I used to. Somebody need to know, hey, hey, me, me, me and my sister, we just started getting along like last month. And, and let me tell you how God did it. You know, no, me, our marriage, yeah, we take good pictures and we smile. But let me tell you the truth, you know, because, you know, you got to take 100 to get one, right? Let me tell you about the 99. Let me, let, me t- let me tell you how you keep your sanity when you're sick. Let me tell you how to keep your sanity when the doctors can't find it. Let me tell you how you get by when your job don't hire you. And I don't know how God took care of me for 12 months without no job. People need to know about your thorn. You ain't the only one that was molested. You ain't the only one that don't know your daddy. You ain't the only one that was forgotten. You ain't the only one that's been betrayed. You ain't the, you're not the only one, but you hide your thorn, your testimony. Paul says, none of y'all are more decorated than me. You think you see God. I went and saw heaven. But let me tell you about my thorn. And God gave Paul, no, I'm sorry, Satan gave Paul this thorn. God did not remove it. Satan caused it. God used it. And he didn't remove the thorn. Here's why. Because he knew he would have gotten arrogant. This is why some stuff ain't happened in your life yet. Because you're not mature enough to handle it. Because your arrogance will take you away from God. You'll start putting credit on yourself. You won't even come. If some of y'all won that Powerball the other week, you wouldn't be here. You don't have the maturity to handle that kind of money. Because your mindset will make you start doing stuff that you're not supposed to do. You would get a pet giraffe and a pet llama. And you'd be walking in here wanting special seating and all that just because you got some money. God don't mind you having no house, but to show them you can do something without them, that's why you don't have it. God don't mind you having no car, but now all of a sudden you want to go back home. I think I want to roll back home for a second. No, you just want to show them people you got a little car. No. (laughs) What why have you put in the place of God that's making his why not work? I'm trying to figure out how a church that's on the move won't come and be affectious about connecting with other people and doing life together for 12 weeks and, and we all grow for the glory of God. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand. If Lady C said, hey, ladies, tonight meet me back here at 630. God gave me something special and ooh we I got a surprise for y'all. Man, y'all will be little resets all around here. Y'all be like, oh, set your time and we, we got to go. Lady C got something for us and you know she don't be playing and she be bringing it. And when she hit this one right here and at the end of the day, oh my God. We'll have more people here, watch this, to get a word than to go deliver the word. Oh, I can tell y'all right now. Every, who, who's a business owner in here? Who a business owner in here? Okay, who want to do, who want to own a business in here? If I told y'all, let me show y'all how I used $30 and made a million dollars. Y'all be here tonight at 7.30. Y'all be here at (laughs) 6.52. And that's not fictitious. I'm talking about for real. Like, I started a business with $30 to my name. Let me show you how I did it. Y'all will be here because you know why? That's about you. No, pastor. When I, Lord bless me, I'm going to feed hungry people. I'm going to buy orphanage. You just start lying. No, you're not. You don't help them people now. No, because you, you think you, you tell yourself you will when you get more money. Oh, no. You're not going to be more generous. It's going to make you more of who you are right now. But when I say, hey, let's come together. Let's, let's sharpen ourselves and get ready to do groups. And, and then it's like, I ain't doing that. So 
This message was multifaceted. I don't know what you got out of it. But one thing is, if you don't lead a D group, you should be here this Tuesday at 730. The Great Commission cannot be the Great Compromise. Like your kids, you say, hey, go do this. Can I do it in five minutes? Please. No, go do what I told you to do right now. And that's how we're doing with God. God, I'll get to that later. I want to I I I get this. I want to get to 75K first. I, I'll get to that stuff. And then you get to 75. 100,000 sure don't look bad. <laughs> Can I let you know something as we get ready to go? Without Christ being the center, you'll never have enough. Your marriage will never be enough. Your kids never be good enough. You'll never have enough peace. Your shape, your size will never be enough. Nothing will ever be enough without him being the center. Amen. Amen. Check this out. Okay. Here's my pastor's points. Number one. Y'all, y'all read that with some passion. One more game. Come on. Why God? Why God? Why me? Why this? Why God? Why? You sound like the modern day children of Israel. Complain, complain, complain. Can we take five seconds and offer up some thanks to drown out some of the complaining we've been doing? more time. Dare to compare. Dare to compare. Some of your wives is because you're comparing yourself to other people. You're looking at their kids. Why my kids can't do that? You're looking at their marriage. Why my wife can't do that? You're looking at their life. Why can't I have that? You, you're looking at, you just, you're comparing yourself to other people and you're discounting what God has already done in your life. And y'all under 21, y'all looking at social media. Man, all I got is 83 followers and look at her. And so you think you got to shake your behind to get more followers. My God. No, man, don't compare. We were young in marriage, elder love, and it was different couples. Some of them, they had a little boy. We'd go over their house and we couldn't have kids. I wanted a little boy. Then I see we, one of them, we in an apartment that they have a townhouse. I want a townhouse. When I, I'm comparing, damn, I wish I had that. Then they, somebody invited to, to a Christmas. I, we went to this Christmas party. Great friend. I was so uncomfortable the whole time because their stuff was nice. <laughs> the best I had was an a, a, a entertainment center from Big Lots that I put together. I got it from Big Lots, but I had a 32-inch TV in it, though. That's good. Yeah, it wasn't new, but I, I mean, I had 32-inch. <laughs> when them big backs look like a little small refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man. Man, when I put that 32 inch in my, in my doggone house, man, you couldn't tell me nothing, man. Because I had a 27 inch sitting on the stereo that my mama gave me. Come on, now the boy come up now. I, I done came up now. I got a 32 inch and an entertainment center. And I got my little giraffe and my lion and stuff sitting up in there, man. I'm cold, boy. I'm cold. I am cold. Come on, man. Dudes don't need much. Lion, giraffe, or eagle. We good, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we good. I just need a tiger or something. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there like, bam, I'm cold. But I kept comparing myself to other people, and I'm looking at people, and they got a business, and I'm looking at their marriage, and their wife listening to what they say. My wife don't listen to me. <laughs> she got an opinion and an attitude with it. Like we arguing because she won't do everything I say. And she looking at people probably like, I wish my husband had like <laughs> Every last one of those couples, none of them are together today. And I'm not, I'm not talking about three or four. I'm talking, ple- I just, for a minute, I just compare. And when you compare, you overlook the blessing that God has already given you. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Some of you, you're looking at their process. No, they, 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 it built quick, but it crashed fast. God is saying, no, I'm forming you. And I'm shaped up. No, I got to break it back down. It's not right. Okay, so I'm going to form it again. And I'm going to, you know what? I got to put in some hardship to test your praise. I got to.
put in this to keep you praying. Because some of you, if he removed all the thorns, you wouldn't praise, you wouldn't pray. He knows I got to keep you here. Here we go. Stop compromising. Stop compromising. Stop compromising. Stop compromising your praise. Stop compromising your faith. Stop compromising doing what God told you to do. Stop compromising whether you're going to come to church or not. Stop, stop. Just stop it. Stop. Just stop it. Stop. Just stop the whole thing. Let's go all in for God. This, let's get in it. This is what we're doing. This is who we is. This is who I am. Stop compromising. I'm going to mess with about eight of y'all and I'm going to pray. Some of y'all are compromising being connected to a church because you got all these wives. Why they, why they this? Why, why they ain't got a deacon board? Why, why this? Why, why that? that I, man, listen, join this church or go somewhere else. Stop dating us. Let's get married. Amen. You coming over here squatting. Oh, I like that. Well, let's, let's, let's do this then if you want to. I, I like you. Let's go. That's what people that like each other do. No, I'm saying, no, because we don't want the power of Christ. We don't want the word. We want our shopping list. It's like, when do we just say, let's do this for Jesus? White, black, man, woman, gay, straight. Let's just get here and see what God do with us. I just lost five people right there. So let me help somebody with that. You talking about gay people join this church? You got made out the same dirt as they made out of. You're not special dirt. And you can't point out what you think is wrong with them unless you're going to open up the roller decks of your life. No, let, let's, let's put everybody in the hands of God and let's see what he does. I don't know what make church people think, make themselves think they came here perfect. All have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. One of my guys might be watching. I ain't going to say your name. He told me something real. He told me something real. He said, man, he said, we, we, we feel you, man. He was cussing everything. He said, we feel you, man. He said, we're watching you. He said, I've been watching you. He said, you, you, you a real person. <laughs> He my boy, he my boy, he my boy. Shout out. He, he watch. He, no, no, no. He said, watch it. He said, hey, when he said, when you know, when you had them other people there, I don't be listening to them. I don't, I don't connect. He said, when you there, he said, I stop everything. This is what got me, Gary. He said, even if I'm sinning, I stop. Oh, wow. That's good. That's good. This ain't about me. This is not about you. This is about him using us to help people. And if that's not your agenda, do me a favor. Leave somebody your seat next week. This is a church that's on fire to win the lost, the hurting, the hypocrite, the church, the unchurched. We're on fire for souls. This is not about notoriety. This is not about money. This is about God. For God we live. For God we die. been too good to us, made too many ways, and you think we're going to sit on the sideline? Let's pray. So, Father, Thank you, God. just the thought of how good you've been, I have to fight tears. Just the thought of the ways you've made makes me want to go harder just the thought of the times you spared my life makes us want to to, to just shout at the thought of the adversity that you've brought us through makes us want to rejoice at the thought of the blessings you've given us that we didn't deserve makes us feel so bad for the times we complained at the thought of the fact that you picked us up turned us around cleaned us off and you desire to use us makes us just say hallelujah so father let our why Submit to your why. 
let those that are watching get off the sidelines. Let those that are here get off the sidelines. I want to ask you this question with all eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you die today, where do you spend eternity? This is about giving your life to Jesus. I want to pray for you right where you stand. If you've walked away from Jesus, it's time for you to reconnect with him. If you say, Pastor Campbell, I'm not sure, I want to include you in my prayer. I'm not going to call your name. I'm not going to ask you to move from your seat. I simply want to know, can I pray for you right where you stand? I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. On the count of three, I simply want you to raise your hand in the air. Those of you that are watching, if you know you need to be included in this prayer, I want you to type, that's me. So I know who I'm praying for, but more importantly, who's choosing heaven. Those of you in here, this is your moment. One, two, three. Slip that hand in the air. Pastor, include me in your prayer. I see you there. I see you there. I see you there. I see you there. I see eight, nine, ten. Okay. Listen, those of you that held your hand up, hold it up again because the ushers are going to put something in it. Until they put something in your hand, please keep your hand up. I need a makeshift usher. Somebody help me out right there. I need somebody. I need one right here. I need one right here. Those, there, there you go. Those of you online, that's me. That's me. There you go. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. There you go. That's me. There, that, there you go. People all over this room giving their life to Jesus. Getting ready to give their life to Jesus. Rededicating their lives to Jesus. Greatest decision you could ever make. So everybody that raised your hand and everybody in here and online, would you repeat after me to support them? Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus thank, you so thank you so much for your love. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love, God. Yes. And your life. Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Into my heart. Be, my Lord Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me how to live an overcoming life for you. I confess I'm changed. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I'm free in Jesus' name. Would you shout amen in here? Come on, let's celebrate. All right, here we go. Last thing and we're gone. Trust me. I'm not going to go through no whole display of why you should join this church. You should join this church because you feel the unction to do it or you don't have a church to go to or you're not growing where you're going. I would be honored to be your pastor to serve you with humility and integrity. What does it take to join this church? Simply wanting to be here. So is there anybody on the count of three? I'm going to tell you, I want you to raise your hand, but those of you that are online, if you want to join this church, I want you to type, go for it. Type, go for it for it because this is our year to go for it. So on the count of three, anybody waving at me, one, two, three, I want to join this church today. I see you, big dog. I see you right there. I see you there. Okay. Very good. I see you there. Here we go. Check this out. Somebody say 20 people. That's what God placed in my heart and that's what we're going to believe for. Those of you that raised your hand, the first thing that we do when people join our church is we give them love. I need to take you to a private area. It'll take three minutes. I want to get a membership profile of you. I don't want you to be like, I'll come back next week. No, we need to strike while the fire is hot. So I need you to get your Bible, your books, your personal belongings. If a friend came with you, they can walk with you. But there are plenty of you that did not raise your hand. Somebody shout, Obey God. Obey God. Some of y'all ain't going to never get to the power operating in your pride. And I want to say this, I want to say this to everybody. You can be any nationality and join this church. Don't y'all believe that? Yeah. Let people know anybody can join this church. You got to let people know that. Okay. So everybody that raised their hand, and if you didn't raise your hand and you know you need to join this church, come on, would you start migrating this way? People are going to start high-fiving you. Would you celebrate them? Would y'all 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 celebrate them? There's one. There's two, there's three, there's four. Overflow. If you're in overflow, would you come in here and let me know? If you're in overflow, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, there's ten. Yes, Lord.
Come on, they still coming, y'all. There's 11, there's 12, there's 13, there's 14. Y'all just got to believe God with me. 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 That's 15. Yeah, what we doing here? That's 15, 16. Okay. Okay. I think that's all. Is there anybody else moving today? Listen. Don't be focused on meeting the number. Make sure that you're in an environment where you can go. Track stars need to track so they can take off. Rockets need the launching pad so they can take off. There's some people you need this environment so you can take off. Somebody say take off. Somebody say take off. Somebody say take off. They still coming y'all. They still coming y'all. I see you big dog. I see you man. I see you man. Go that way with them. Take him right there, Jeff. I see you, my God. You, hey, I'm telling you, it's something on you, man. It's something on you. God gonna change your life. He gonna show you in 14 days. It's something on you, man. It's something on you, man. Look at somebody else and say, obey God. No, y'all ain't looking at him. Look at him and tell him, obey God. Y'all hear me, but y'all got to obey him. If you know you, I tell him later. No, walk down here. There's a blessing in obedience. What are other two or three people that's supposed to do it? Are y'all ready? Anybody else? Anybody? You right there? Okay, there go one. Okay. Obey God. Let me say this. Listen. A man of wisdom and distinction. Don't you allow the youthfulness of this church to make you feel like you don't have a place. There are many fatherless men here that need wisdom. And your life experience and what God has placed in you will cause you to be a blessing to many. Don't think just because it's a little bit different than what you're used to that there's no significance in what God wants to do in you. Get with the vision. Get, your heart, get my heart and watch God give you your ladder going to be better than your brain. Anybody else? Anybody, I'm telling y'all, this is a moment. Anybody else? I don't want to miss nobody. It's, are they moving? If you're moving, I'm counting you. You can't move in here. I count you. You move. Okay, I know some of y'all got to go home because I'm hungry. I'm about to go eat. Okay, let's pray. I don't want to miss nobody. I don't want to miss nobody. I don't want to miss nobody. Look at the person. I, I, I'm telling you. I know what the Lord said. Are you in business? Hey, are you in business? Why not? I say, are you in business? Yeah. No, just business. You're a rapper? You're a rapper? Hey, yeah, don't worry about it. You have an entrepreneurial skill. I know you do. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm not guessing. No, you have an entrepreneurial skill. You're not here just to grow in God. You're here to get the impartation of, our entrepreneurs, of entrepreneurial progress that's in my life. Listen to me differently. God will blow your life up. The struggle that's internal will be outshined by the beauty on the outside. People see the smile, but they don't know the struggle. But when this thing gets unlocked, every dream you thought you couldn't afford will be your newest transaction. That's real. That's real. That is real. God gonna give you a word, you gonna speak it, and floodgates gonna open up. Watch this. But don't compromise, and this is my last thing I gotta say to you. Get out the boat. You know what I'm talking about? Peter said, Lord, let me come. You gotta start asking for crazy stuff. And watch God make your crazy the newest thing that other people cannot see. God bless you. Bye. I said two or three. I think that was two. Where's my last one? I think I said two or three. That was one. Hey, man, I'm going to call you out. Can I call you out? Give me two. No, no, I'm talking to you, big old dude. Give me two weeks of joining this church. If your life don't change, quit. You already go here? Okay, I ain't know that. I thought you, I ain't been here. I ain't been here. Okay, well, good. I ain't been here. I ain't been here. 
Well, you still got two weeks. Your life going to change. I just got back. I ain't no. No, I'm serious, y'all. I, I'm, I'm in my zone, man. I'm in my thing. God talking to me. It's somebody, you got to give this church 14 days. Give this church 14 days. Say, look at the person say, would you hurry up? I'm hungry. No, let's not even play. Look at them and tell them what God did in your life in this church. Look at them. Look at them. Tank, tear that section up. Tell them they need to come on, Tank. You need to tell them, man. If they don't go here, you need to tell them. Don't be offended if somebody start witnessing to you. You already go to this church. I'm telling you, 14 days. If things don't change in 14 days, let me know I'll find you a better church. My guy, I need you to make that step. I need you to make that step, my guy. Is it... Are, I need you to make that step. I need you to make that step. What's your name? Rayvon, what do you do? You're, you're a caterer for Delta? Okay. What do you want to do? Okay. Father, I thank you for this bold step on this gentleman's life. And uh, I don't know what this means. I, I'm not going to speak anything to him that I, that I don't hear or see. Sometimes it's not what we want. It's what we need. I just pray, God, that you give him an inkling, a glimpse to know that moving and joining this church was not a fluke. It was not an emotion. It was a God move. And that you do something in his life like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, man. Come on, Lady C. Thank you all for y'all patience. All my guests, God bless you. I got one more right here. Come here, baby. I know some of y'all gonna go. I'm good. Can I give you a hug? What's your name? Brianna. Brianna. You're not new to this, are you? I know. I know you ain't new to this. Lady C. I know you've been standing for a minute. Take your seat as I roll through these announcements really quickly. How many of you all are excited about that word today? Man. Okay, so immediately following service today, we will have Next Steps 1.0. So for all of our new partners, members that have recently joined, Next Steps First Class is happening today, immediately following service in this room to my left. I encourage you to go ahead and knock it out today. If your babies are upstairs and you're gonna stay, that's fine. They'll just move them over into Next Steps Care. Pastor mentioned the 3D conference that is happening uh, August 19th and 20th for the men. If you open up the TFC Atlanta app in your phone, you can click on events and you'll be able to register in there. Bring a friend with you. This coming Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., Pastor and I will be hosting The Table. It's our Wednesday um, kind of workshop that we do dedicated to relationships, all relationships. So whether you're dating, engaged, or married, this is really when we want to see you. We don't want to see you when you in the struggle. We really would rather see you um, as we do maintenance on our relationships, okay? So yes, we don't mind talking to you when we need it, when we need it, but here is where we can maintain. So 7.30 um, on this coming Wednesday night here in person, and we'll stream it as well. D Group's training is happening again this coming Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. This is what we want to do. One of the scriptures pastor made reference to during service, it talked about how when we bring fruit his fruit will remain. And when his fruit remains, we receive the blessing of God from that. And so people are God's most prized possession. 
And I'm telling you, if we care about people, he cares about our stuff. And then Faith, uh, Faith Family Month is happening in August. We prayed for the children today. I think next Sunday is our family cookout. So we're looking forward to spending that time and just hanging out together. So next week, come prepared to spend a little extra time when you come to service. And then lastly, will you um, take a second and check out this video that I ran across yesterday? in Atlanta, Georgia, September 9th and 10th. It is called the Surrender Conference. This conference is gonna bless your whole entire life. Let me tell you, it's gonna actually teach you how to have a better quality of life. Ladies, we need to surrender, honey, we need to surrender. If you have had any doubt, fears, insecurities, hurt, pain, trauma, drama, then you need to be here. You need to be at this conference with me on September 9th and 10th in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's totally free, totally free. I want to be your hostess with the mostest, Michelle Seabrook, so you're going to click the link, you're going to register, and I will see you there. All right? All right? That is awesome. <laughs> So yes, we are doing a conference for, for um, women surrendered September 9th and 10th. I do have 50 ambassadors that have partnered with me to um, register at least 1,000 women for this conference. Right now we are at 502, so we are on our way. Um, I give amazing gifts. I, really, I like really nice things. How many of y'all think I like nice things? So you know I, I give good gifts. You want to be an ambassador with me to help me fulfill this. And so the woman that, um, yeah, they, they want to be an ambassador. But we're looking for fi um, another 500 ladies to register for this conference. You can also find it inside of the app. And if you'd like to become an ambassador um, to drive people toward this conference, Nicole Walters will be one of our speakers as well as two really dear girlfriends of mine. It's going to be amazing. And, um, you know, kind of don't want to miss it. And I lifted the registration fee, so it's free. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's head out. Listen, don't show up next week without bringing somebody with you. Of course I'm being funny, but literally bring someone with you. On your seat, when you got here, there was a Reach One card. Please take this card with you. I challenge each and every one of you to give it to someone that you do not know this week. And this is how you do this. Hi, my name is Felicia. I'm a member of the Faith Center, and I'd love to invite you to my church. If you don't go to church, I completely understand, but I just wanted to share this with you. And that's it. Tell them to have a great day, and you walk away. Share it with someone that you do not know. Share it further with someone that doesn't look like you. Share it with someone that you would not normally talk to. God is concerned about all people, and we should be too. Y'all with me? All right, Father, we thank you so much for this time with your word. God, thank you for the reminder that we needed to put the focus back on what was most important to you, that your why must be greater than our why. Thank you for the protection and the guidance for our children. Thank you for those that are uh, leaving even to go off to school. And as we go about our week, we thank you for all good things in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Y'all have a great one. We'll see you soon.